Magyana Timirandasya, Gyananjana Shalakaya, Chaksuran Militanyena, Tesmai Shri Gurave Namaha, Namam Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Pristaya Bhutale, Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane, Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Precharine, Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Desatarine, Jaya Shri Vanchakaupa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha, Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha, Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we welcome everyone to our ongoing study of Bhagavad Gita at the level of Bhakti Shastri and we are on Chapter number 17, right? We were speaking about austerity and we were hearing how there is austerity of the body, there is austerity in words or speech and there is also austerity of the mind. So Lord Krishna described austerity of the body, that we worship the Supreme Lord, the Brahmanas, the spiritual teachers and superiors like father and mother. And he also mentions austerity of the body to be cleanliness, simplicity, celibacy, and non-violence. Austerity, very important, right? Lord Rishabdev encouraged his 100 sons that if they did austerity, then they would experience real pleasure. He told them, don't be anxious for the pleasure of sense gratification because that pleasure is available even for the pigs, which eat stool. The pleasure of sense gratification is there for the animals. We want, if you want to get real pleasure, the highest pleasure, then first of all, do some austerity. And by austerity, we will get purification of our existence. And then we can go on to experience real pleasure, real happiness. Right? So, austerity of the body is described like that. And then austerity of speech, speaking words that are truthful, pleasing, beneficial, and not agitating to others, as well as regularly reciting Vedic literatures. So important for us to try to develop this and we, we often don't think about it and we speak harshly, we speak rashly, and we don't take advantage to regularly read the Vedic literatures or to recite them. It's important. We should read Bhagavad Gita a chapter a day, every day one chapter. Uh, just now. Actually, I was speaking to some devotees in Malaysia and they're doing a program. They've begun a program, Bhagavad Gita in 18 days. They're doing one chapter a day and they have over 1,000 people enrolled for the course. More than 1,000 people. They're doing it virtual, online, and they're presenting a chapter a day. And they have more than 1,000 people all enrolled, taking part studying the Bhagavad Gita. They have them divided into groups, you know, like 40, 50 people each group. But 
it's a good program. I'm sure you could do something also. You can also do something. Many people know the Bhagavad Gita. All right, then austerity of the mind is described in text number 16. Do you, do you want me to share the text? Do you, do you need to see the Bhagavad Gita or do you have your own Bhagavad Gitas? Anybody doesn't have a Bhagavad Gita? We can share the screen. Yes, if you like Maharaj. <laughs> okay, I'll share the screen. Can everyone see? Yes, yes Maharaj. Okay, good. So, we're on text number uh, 16 here. Satisfaction, simplicity, gravity, self-control and purification of one's existence are austerities of the mind. This is an important point. Uh, the quality of a brahmana, brahmana remembers a symbol of the mode of goodness, is sat they should be satisfied. In the Krishna book you can read how Rukmini was supposed to be married, Sishupal, her, or uh, she was supposed to be married to Sishupal. Rukmini's brother had arranged her marriage to Sishupal. So she wrote a letter to Lord Krishna, gave it to a brahmana to go to Dwarka to deliver the mail. There was no mobile phone and there was no email or anything. So she wrote a letter and had sent a brahmana there to Dwarka to give the message to Lord Krishna. And when Lord Krishna met the brahmana, Lord Krishna first of all asked the brahmana, How are you, my dear brahmana friend? Are you following the principles of Brahman, the Brahman, of Brahmanical life? Are you satisfied? So satisfaction is important. You have to, we have to control the mind. Prabhupada says in the purport, satisfaction of the mind, here you can see, satisfaction of the mind can be obtained only by taking the mind away from thoughts of sense enjoyment. The more we think of sense enjoyment, the more the mind becomes dissatisfied. In the present age, we unnecessarily engage the mind in so many different ways for sense gratification. And so there is no possibility of the minds becoming satisfied. The best course is to divert the mind to the Vedic literature which is full of satisfying stories, as in the Puranas and the Mahabharat. One can take advantage of this knowledge and thus become purified. So this is the secret Prabhupada is giving us, how to be satisfied. Hear more, read the, read the books, read the Mahabharat, read the Puranas, read everything. Try to get some good book and become absorbed in nice uh, topics of Lord Krishna. It's important for us and that way the mind can, you won't think of sense gratification. All right. So satisfaction is one of the austerities of the mind. The others were simplicity, gravity, self-control, purification of existence. Okay. Text 17, the threefold austerity performed with transcendental faith by men not expecting material benefits but engaged only for the sake of the Supreme is called austerity in goodness. Austerity, tapasya. Right? Austerity in goodness. The threefold austerity with 
with transcendental faith by men not expecting material benefit, but engaged only for the sake of the Supreme. So that is the point. We're doing it for the pleasure of the Supreme. We're doing it not for our own benefit. We're thinking we want to do a service for Krishna. But then, next text, 18, describes penance in the mode of passion, performed out of pride and for the sake of getting respect, honour and worship, is said to be in the mode of passion. It is neither stable nor permanent. So sometimes people may do austerities, they want to get recognition, they want to get honour. So that's the mode of passion. And the result of actions in the mode of passion? Misery. Text 19 describes penance in the mode of ignorance. Penance performed out of foolishness with self-torture or to destroy or injure others is said to be in the mode of ignorance. Self-torture. I know uh, in, in Malaysia they have a festival every year in the month of January. Uh, it's called Thai Pusam. And they worship Kartikeya, the son of Lord Shiva. And sometimes you, there are many people who come every year to that festival. They do things like stick hooks into their bodies and they even put things through their mouth and through their tongue and through their cheeks. Sometimes they have a big metal rod will go right through both cheeks. Oh, and, and sometimes people walk on, nail, on shoes with nails upturned. So they're walking on the nails. And so this is all penance in the mode of austerity, in the mode of ignorance. Uh, we don't put on tilak with the, you know, like in, in the other sampradaya, Sri Sampradaya, they burn the, the tilak into the body, but we simply put on gopi chandan. Our penance is in the mode of goodness. But some people, they do things out of the mode of passion or out of the mode of ignorance. So uh, Prabhupada gives the example about Haranyakashipu, how he worshipped Lord Brahma, performed austerities to please Lord Brahma. So undergoing penance for something which is impossible is certainly in the mode of ignorance. All right, going on to the next section, text number 20 begins speaking about charity. We like to be charitable. As devotees, you know, we're not miserly and we like to do what we can to help others, especially people in need. We like to give charity, we like to do charity. So charity can also be influenced by the modes of nature. We have to know what is proper charity. Text number 20 describes charity given out of duty without expectation of return at the proper time and place and to a worthy person is considered to be in the mode of goodness. So first point is it's done out of duty. Who is supposed to give charity? Whose duty is it to give charity? Yes, right. Grihastas actually, they're the ones who are meant to give charity. But Brahmanas can also give charity. Brahmanas are allowed to receive charity and they're also allowed to give charity. So Brahmana, anybody who's a Brahmana, they can give charity. 
and Kshatriyas, of course they are also meant to be charitable. There were many charitable Kshatriyas like Maharaj Janaka, he was very charitable. And we read, we read about Nanda Maharaj, of course Nanda Maharaj was Vaishya, but he was Grihastha, so he gave charity. Right? When did he give charity? Who remembers? When did Nanda Maharaj give charity? On the uh, birth of Lord Krishna. Yes, right. That was one time. There were other occasions also. But and he named the names of them. Give names to uh, Krishna and Balram then also. Yes, the name giving ceremony he has to give some charity. You have to give charity to the Brahmins. And uh, yes, uh, so it's, it's the duty of householders, it's the duty of Kshatriyas, especially the duty of Brahmins also. So anybody who has a lot of wealth, they have excess, you know, they can give charity. And even if you don't have wealth, you can just simply give food. And you can give, just simply give the holy name. You give charity. Generally, as devotees, we like to give prasadam. You know, we don't like to give people money. We'd rather give them some prasadam, right? But if you give people money, you don't know what they're going to do with it. So gener generally, when it comes to giving charity, we would like to give them prasadam. So it's a good idea for devotees always to carry prasadam with them wherever they go. Especially if you're in India, we know there's always people coming begging. And I think also in Indonesia is a lot. I was When I was in Indonesia, I know there was people coming also begging. <laughs> I don't know if people have the, they may not like to give food there, but I, I know in India it's quite common to give food. When we, when we would come into Calcutta airport, I I've, have the experience, young children being there, and they will come and they will ask, first they will ask for money, and then when you don't give any money, they say, can you give prasadam, give prasadam? And they're very happy to get some prasadam, because they know the devotees. And they know devotees often come with prasadam, they're coming off a flight, so they often carry prasadam with them. So the children would always ask us, do you have prasadam, give us prasadam? And they're very happy if you give them prasadam. Alright, so charity should be given out of duty. And uh, without expectation of return, at the proper time and place, and to a, a person, a worthy person. So, what's the proper time and place? Yes? What would be the proper time to give charity? Uh, it is recommended to give, uh, given at a place of pilgrimage uh, at lunar or solar eclipse at the month of or to a qualified Brahmana or Vaishnava. Right. At the lunar or solar eclipse, just like in the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the 10th canto, you have Lord Krishna coming to Kurukshetra. Why? What was happening? There was a, a lunar eclipse, a solar eclipse. A solar eclipse, right. There was a solar eclipse. So Lord Krishna came. Lord Krishna came for uh, to perform sacrifices there. And at the time of performing sacrifices, so many great sages and brahmanas came. And Lord Krishna gave them all charity. So, when you visit a holy place, it's customary to give charity. There's a pastime with Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada 
and he was doing parikrama in the whole, in, I think in Vrindavan or in Mayapur, and he had many devotees with him, and he told them that you should give charity to the beggars. And we know when you go to a temple in the holy place, like it, if you go to Yoga Pit or somewhere, there's always a group of beggars sitting there. And so Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati told the devotees, he said, you're all coming here to the holy place, you have to give some charity to these beggars. You cannot just simply neglect them. It's the duty of the Grihastas to give some charity. Of course, you don't have to give a big amount. You give some one or two rupees, you give some small amount, you know, but you should give something. And that way, they're happy. But Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati told the devotees, see, so don't be miserly, you give something to these people that they're in the holy place. They're not like ordinary beggars in the city. They're actually pious people. They come in the holy place and they're begging. You should give something. So that, that's the proper time, top, proper place. Solar, if there's an eclipse also, that's a good one. And if it's at the end of the month, that's also appropriate to give charity at the end of the month. But then Prabhupada also mentions, if there's a, a very you know, good devotee, a, a, a worthy person in, in, who is considered, if, if the person is very saintly or, you know, wor a worthy person, you, you know him, you recognize him, then we should, should be, you may also like to give charity to him. It's in the mode of goodness. Charity should be given without any consideration of return. That's also important. Some people, you know, there's a saying, they have a saying in Hindi, they say, Ek paisa dega das lakh malega. You know, I will give one paisa and I will get ten lakhs back. <laughs> you know, it, it's not how it's supposed to be, right? We should give without any expectation of return. So charity to the poor is sometimes given out of compassion. But if a poor man, in the Purport Prabhupada writes, if a poor man is not worth giving charity to, then there is no spiritual advancement. In other words, uh, indiscriminate charity is not recommended in the Vedic literature. We should give charity to the qualified persons to proper. That's the point. Don't just give everybody charity. If people will do sinful activities, then we're responsible for, if we give them money and they go off and do something sinful, then we, we also take some karma. So we have to be very careful about that. All right. Uh, we have also the example of Ranti Dev. He was giving charity. He was very charitable. Maharaj Ranti Dev giving his food away when he'd been fasting. <coughs> Many examples. We have Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj gave everything to Lord Bhamana Dev. Gave even his own body to Lord Bhamana Dev. Okay, going on, text number 21. But charity performed with no expectation. Oh, charity performed with the expectation of some return or with a desire for fruit of results or in a grudging mood is said to be charity in the mode of passion. So, you know, sometimes you do it in a grudging manner. You didn't really want to give the charity, but you do it anyway. Just like sometimes we're, we, we may go to distribute books and we may, you know, get someone to take a book and grudgingly he takes a book and gives a donation. He didn't really want it, 
but he does it grudgingly. So that's in the mode of passion. It's not very good charity. It's not first class charity. It's in the mode of passion. But the point is, he's got the book. And if he takes the book home, then somebody may read it and maybe even he will read it. We, put, we do put a lot of emphasis on distributing books in our Krishna Consciousness movement. And it got us a bad reputation that we were so pushy, we were so determined to get people to take books that people began to resent us. And they thought that, you know, we're, we're, all, we're just doing it to get their money. They didn't appreciate that we were doing it to try to get them to understand the book and to read the book. They thought we were only interested just to get their money. Nowadays, of course, a lot of book distribution is done freely. The congregations support it and give donations to the temple so the temple can distribute the books either freely or at a much lower cost than their actual cost. We cover it up with the donations from the congregation. So this has helped a bit to improve the image of the devotees. So anyway, charity in the mode of passion is people want to get something in return. So this is not, not good. Right? Prabhupada describes in the purport, Why have I spent so much in this way? So people, <laughs> they regret, right? Why have I spent so much? Charity is also sometimes given under some obligation at the request of a superior. These kinds of charity are said to be given in the mode of passion. Right? Sometimes you yeah, have a superior, you have a boss or someone who's superior to you and they come and they tell you, you have to do this, you have to take that, you have to give this charity. And you have to do it because you're obliged to this person. But you don't do it in the best mood. You do it grudgingly. So it's charity in the mode of passion. There are many charitable foundations which offer their gifts to institutions where sense gratification goes on. Such charities are not recommended in the Vedic scripture. Only charity in the mode of goodness is recommended. So, you know, people may give charity to some kind of institution where the institu people in the institution are, maybe they're drinking or gambling, maybe they're, they're smoking, doing these kind of activities. But people donate, people give them charity, and the money is used like that sometimes to support these kind of sensual activities. So that's not the highest charity. We want to be careful when we give charity. We want to know that the money is going to be used properly. And so it's important that when you give some charity, you want to make sure that the money is properly used. Some people like to give charity for the deities, for the service of the deities. Just a minute, let me switch this off. And so some people are more careful where they give charity. They want to see them, of course, they want to see that their money is properly used, and that there's no uh, corruption. So then finally, in text 22, we have charity in the mode of ignorance. Charity performed at an impure place, at an Im improper time, an unworthy person, or without proper attention and respect is said to be in the mode of ignorance. So 
if you, if you give charity without proper attention and respect, then this is also charity in the mode of ignorance. It's not nice. When you give charity, we should do it with the proper mood, with the proper care and attention, lovingly, caringly, not just without attention and without respect. And you give it to a, an unworthy person, just like, well, somebody comes and asks you for charity and you may feel, oh, okay, and you give him something and then next minute you see he goes to buy cigarettes or he goes to buy drugs or something. And, you know, you've given the money for that. So we'll feel very bad, certainly. Prabhupada explains in the purport, contributions for indulgence in intoxication and gambling are not encouraged here. That sort of contribution is in the mode of ignorance. Such charity is not beneficial. Rather, sinful persons are encouraged. Similarly, if a person gives charity to a suitable person, but without respect and without attention, that sort of charity is also said to be in the mode of darkness. Okay, so any questions about charity? expect anything in return but out of reciprocation they give us some uh, uh, shastric books and uh, things like that so uh, so is that okay Matlab, uh, what should we understand like this uh, suppose we get something in reciprocation so what should we understand how should we take it well we're not giving the charity with the intention of just getting something from them obviously yes, you know so you you're giving the charity with love and devotion, and they're giving you the book with love and devotion. You don't need to accept the book unless you want to, or what you can do, you can take the book and you give it to somebody else. Actually, it's proper that even though you don't want the book and don't need it, it's proper to take it. You take it, and then later on you can always give it to another person. If, if you don't accept the charity, it's not nice, it's not good. Uh, Malati Maharaji, who is a very senior Prabhupada disciple, she describes how when she first came to India, uh, they were doing Harinam Sankirtan, and people would come and they would want to give cloth. And she was carrying her baby at that time, she had a baby in her arms, and people would come, they want to give her cloth. And she would say, no, no, it's okay, I don't need it, I don't... But they would feel very disturbed, very upset. And Prabhupada then came to her and told her, when people give you something, you must take it. It's not good, it's, a, it's, a, it's offense if you don't take it. So it's, it's important, they give you something in charity, you, get, you give charity to a temple, temple gives you charity back. What they give, you, you have to take. You take it and then you can always give it to somebody else. Yes, yes, thank you so much. I had the experience, you know, I had the experience one time, but I was in London and I was with uh, Giri Raj Swami. Giri Raj Swami is a very senior disciple of Srila Prabhupada. So he had taken a number of us devotees with him to the home of a, a very respectable, wealthy Indian man who lived in London. And the man was very generous and he gave each of the devotees money. 
He gave each of us, uh, you know, a nice amount of money as a donation, as charity. So one of the devotees who was there, he, he took the money and immediately in front of the man, he came and gave it to Giriraj. So the man was a little disturbed that, you know, that you know, the man said, you know, I'm going to give Giriraj, you know, I, this is for you, I will certainly give to Giriraj. You don't need to give him your donation, I was giving that for you. But the devotee said, well, no, no, I don't need your donation, I wanted to give to Giriraj. So the man was not pleased. And so what should have happened is that you accept the donation in the presence of the man, and then afterwards, once you leave the man's house, when you get back to the temple, or when you're on the way back to the temple, then you give the money to Giriraj. But you don't do it in the presence of the man who gave you the money, because if you immediately give it away to somebody else, it's not very nice that he gave you something, you, it's, you know, you take it, and later on then you give it to Giriraj or you give it to the temple. I was with some ladies one time, I'd gone to Nepal with a group of Chinese ladies, and one man had kindly donated uh, some kind of Harinam chadar to each and every one of the ladies, the Chinese ladies. But one of the ladies, you know, she just kind of took the, she took the chadar in the presence of everyone, she just threw it into the crowd of Nepali devotees. Now, the Nepali devotees were very happy, of course, to get it, but it wasn't a very nice thing to do. If somebody gives you charity and you just throw it away to other people, you know, you, there's a proper way to do it. You take it and you keep it, and then later on you can always give it to other people. So you have to be a, you have to be a little con conscious, a little careful about re accepting charity and about giving charity. Now recently I was reading a book by Krishna Shetra Swami. Krishna Shetra Swami is a scholarly devotee. He took a PhD at Oxford University in, uh, Hindu, in some kind of Hindu studies, maybe. Anyway, he wrote a book recently on uh, ethics of, in cow caring, principles of ethics in caring for cows. And he describes in that book that there are, that some people have very high standards about who they will give charity to, because they give cows in charity. So when you're giving cows in charity, you don't want, you don't want to give a cow to just anyone, right? <laughs> you know, you're going out, maybe you go out on Sankirtan one day, and somebody comes and says, hey, I want to give you some charity. And you say, okay, very nice, what? And they come and say, here, take a cow. <laughs> you know, a cow, of course, is the highest charity in the Vedic culture to give cows. But you, you have to be very careful about who you give cows to. Because you give a cow to the wrong person, they may slaughter the cow. So you have to be very careful about giving cows away. And there are standards about who is qualified to accept a cow. Uh, in Hong Kong, I remember one of the Chinese girls was going on book distribution <laughs> and somebody gave her a chicken one day, <laughs> a live hen, a live hen. Uh, <laughs> what, what do you do with it, you know, somebody gives you a hen <laughs> in Hong Kong. <laughs> so charity is a very, uh, very sensitive thing, be careful. We have to know the principles as devotees, as Vaishnavas, or trying to be Vaishnavas, we're often given charity. It's our duty to accept. Generally, we accept, of course, if, if they, unless they give us some un, untouchable, prohibited thing. But generally, we will accept what is given. And we want to use it for the service of Krishna. 
Any other questions about charity? Uh, yes, we have three more, Maharaj. Okay. So first, from Asim Krishna Prabhu. Go ahead, Prabhuji. Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Maharaj, I like to ask that if we don't have prasadam uh, with us, then should we always give some kind of charity to somebody who is asking from us like a beggar? Because if we, some, if we don't give, then he makes a face like that he is very disappointed many times. Yes. Or we also... Yes, so, yes, you should give something. You should carry some prasadam with you. You should carry prasadam with you so you can always give some prasadam. Just like when we go on, in Mayapur, when we go on the Navadvip Parikrama, we always bring prasadam. We bring some kind of sweet which is made and we distribute this sweet to everyone. Or sometimes we have peanuts and we will give some salted nuts. Maharaj, if, we, if they ask about, uh, for money, some money? Well, that's not what we give. We, we say, sorry, I don't have money, but I'll give you some prasadam. I'll give you food. We don't, we don't want to give them money. That's not for giving to people because we don't know how they're going to use the money. That's a problem. But if we know that he's really uh, in need of money, means he has no money for eating food also, then uh, should we give him? He has no money for food, so we're giving food. We give prasadam. So we should avoid giving money at, at any cost? It's safer. Because if you give money, you don't know what they're going to do with it. Yes. You give money to a child, you give money to some child, the child takes the money, gives it to the mother or father, and they buy cigarettes or alcohol. Yes, yes Maharaj. Maharaj, also sometimes we see that if you don't give anything, then sometimes the beggar or somebody who's asking, he gives some uh, curses like that. Should we be careful or afraid of those things? Well, that's no. We all, we give we give prasadam. Yes. We don't. So we, it's a, you can also give book if you want, or give but give prasadam. That's a, usually that's a, what we like to give. Okay, Maharaj. Then better to I will keep prasadam with you. I heard a story that Prabhupada one time was in the train and the beggar came. So Prabhupada gave like one or two rupees and then the beggar complained that this is not enough. And Prabhupada, but Prabhupada said to the beggar, he said, you're a beggar. He said, how can I give you more? He said, you're a beggar. So when you give to charity, when you give money to some beggar, you don't give a big amount. If you have to, if you're going to give money, you give one or two rupees. You know, when you go to, the, when you go on Parikrama, when you go to like Govardhan Hill or something, you'll see there are people selling, they'll give you coins. They give you change. You give them 10 rupees and they'll give you 10 rupees, they'll give you 10, 10 rupee coin, one rupee coin. So they'll give you even half, half a rupee coins. And then when you go to each temple, you can put one coin, one coin, one coin. And when you give charity to the beggars, you can give them also like that. One rupee or a few paisa, a few paisa. You give each one a small amount. You don't give them a lot of money. Yes, Maharaj. Maharaj, one more question coming from this, Maharaj. That if somebody uh, curses us, then is it effective? In, uh, is there any power in their words that anybody uh, uh, does some curse like a beggar or some anybody third person? Well, well, we're devotees, we just surrender to Krishna, right? What did Maharaj Ambarish do when Durvasa Muni was trying to harm him? You just take shelter of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna will protect you. Yes, we have to know only Krishna can protect us. Said surrender. Yes, 
And so somebody is cursing us, we don't know if they're powerful or not, but we just take shelter of Krishna. If they're, they're cursed, we, we can say, thank you, I will remember Krishna more now. Now that you're cursing me, I, can, I will think more of Krishna to protect myself. When Chitraketu was cursed by Uma, Lord Shiva's wife cursed Chitraketu, he said, thank you, mother. So devotee, devotee can accept whatever happens. If people want to curse us, all right. We will bless them. We will say, Hare Krishna. You know, if you don't have prasadam, you can always give a mantra card. Give a mantra card with the holy name, with the mantra. Teach them to chant the mantra. That's the highest charity. Right? That's the highest charity. You give the holy name, you give prasadam. You cannot do better than that. There's no higher charity than that. Yes, ma'am. Sometimes people are very sentimental. When you want to give them money, you give them money, it, it just be wasted. Yes. And you'll attract so many more beggars, they'll come. All right, so someone else has their hand up? Yes. Silakan di nawa cala po. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. What happened? I want to uh, tell my experience once in Jagannath Puri. When I had darshan in one place there, in the Vimala Devi temple, in the Jagannath Puri temple complex, the, the panda there uh, told me to uh, uh, do prayers to Vimala Devi. I, I don't really... I... I don't really understand the 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 mantra but i heard there are 10000 rupees in the mantra that dinawatsala will donate 10000 rupees uh, and he said i i don't have more money with me at this at this time i i, I only have 80 rupees so the the panda forced that if uh, if you don't do this, uh, you have made offense to Vimala Devi. Uh, I, I prayed and uh, slowly, slowly I went out without uh, without them uh, knowing. So, uh, what what to do in that situation, Maharaj? Well, I think you did the right thing. You have to be very careful. When you go to these kind of temples, everywhere you get that kind of thing. So when you go to these kind of temples, it's better not to go alone. So what about what about in Iskon when when uh, let's say for example like, like in Mayapur when we donate uh, some amount of money then there's a, a reward for it like uh, we had maybe get a gold coin or something and we get some uh, facilities like that so it seems like it's transactional well, what about this manager? well yeah Mayapur they do these kind of things just to encourage some materialistic people 
that they can give charity. Some people like to get something in return for their donation. They like to just show that they give a donation. So they give something in return. There has to be some kind of reciprocation. You know, if somebody's giving charity, there should be some appreciation for their donation. Give something, some kind of gift. Sometimes they, they give you prasada, sometimes they give you the gold coin like that, you know. Just some kind of little token of appreciation that you've given charity. Something is expected. They have to give something. If, you, if they don't give anything, that's not good. Sometimes people come, they don't even give, want to give a receipt. It, Should this be uh, also uh, done in other temples in Iskon? Should this be applied? Yes, Maharaj. Should this be applied in other temples also in Iskon? Yes, there should be some appreciation for people who give donations to the temple. Just like, uh, you know, somebody's donating to the temple, you should give them maybe maha sweets or a picture of the deities. There should be something. It's customary in any temple where you're giving support, you're giving some donation, they'll give you something. We will continue. Uh, next we have Walmiki Prabhu. Yes. Uh, help him. <coughs> Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances of Gulesh to Shlop Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare, Hare Krishna. Go ahead. Yes, okay. Uh, dear Maharaj, I am um, one situation when I found myself was very strange and heavy and I, I didn't know what to do. It was uh, one story on, on Harinam and I was leader on, on Harinam and uh, we were chanting nicely and uh, one a seller of salami, you know, sausages. So he was so ex excited with uh, our uh, chanting and uh, so he he wanted to give something and uh, he came to one, devo one devotee <clears throat> and he gave him uh, <laughs> these sausages <laughs> and I, I and i was like oh boy what, what we what we can do with this stuff and uh, so i uh, uh, th then i was thinking that somehow i must use it but i don't know how to use it for krishna and so i was struggling and uh, <clears throat> uh, i was thinking you know as a sankirtan devotee uh, in, from a different uh, point of view that he is he got really ugra karma uh, on him so so we have to do something with this uh, stuff so uh, we gave this uh, to one dog uh, who is actually, you know, I was thinking that this dog is uh, Vaishnava, uh, one devotee got this dog, so Vaishnava dog, so, um, so, so he is protecting devotee, so we, get, we gave uh, these uh, uh, sausages to that, to that, uh, to that dog, and so I, I, many years I was thinking if I, if I did good thing or or foolish, so if you can say something about it, thank you, much. Mm. Yes, it was very what, tricky. <laughs> what to do? <laughs> Somebody gave you some sausage. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I think I would just throw it in the garbage myself.
you give it to dogs, you give sausages to dogs, then they want, they want more meat. Just like we have dogs here in the Dham, the dogs here in Mayapur, they don't eat meat. They, they don't, nobody gives them meat, they just eat chapatis and rice and, <laughs> and sabji. Nobody gives them meat. He has understood marriage. So it was foolish. Yeah. So, what to do? You get, somebody gives you garden, got some sausage, give, put it as garbage. Okay. Thank you, Manish. Okay, we'll take... So we have two more, Maharaj. Oh, still more questions, okay. Yeah. Uh, next, Bankim Goinda Prabhu. Please, Let's go on, please. Hare Maharaj, Adat Prana Maharaj. Maharaj, during earlier times in ISKCON, we used to, I mean, devotees used to approach the richer people. Temples. So, so uh, persuading them, convincing them for a donation, and the mood, the, the, the mood in which they give the donation, will it also apply in this same uh, rules, Maharaj? Because actually, we are trying to get from them. They don't come out with charity. We try to persuade them or convince them for donation. So that is also considered as a charity because they they won't be donating the same mood. They won't be donating in the same mode. Yeah, in the mode like what is explained here, without expectation, because we are convinced, we are trying to persuade them to donate. Either it may be land or money. And they give grudgingly. Yes, that's because we are trying to persuade them. Hmm. Well, well, if they give grudgingly, then it's, it's charity in, in the mode of passion, right? It's, it's, they're, <laughs> they're giving, they're, but they're giving to Krishna, right? Yes. So because they're giving to Krishna, there's some benefit, there's certainly some benefit for them. That because they're because they're giving to Krishna, although they may give grudgingly, the, what the, whatever they give is going to be used in the service of Lord Krishna. So it's the greatest benefit for them. After some time, they'll remember that I give that, I give that, I give for that, and they'll think of Krishna. There's a story about. Uh, the, the, the priest or the monk or the Brahmin came to the home of someone asking for charity. And the woman, the lady in the home, she was not pleased and she thought, oh no, a beggar, let me... Anyway, she came and she brought ashes and she gave him ashes. So the beggar, the beggar, he, you know, initially she didn't want to give anything, but then she said, all right, I'll give you ashes. And so the beggar said, oh, yes, okay, I'll take ashes. And so the beggar took the ashes. And why did he take the ashes? Because he knows that now this lady has begun to give. So in the future, she'll give again. So in this way, he was happy. because Although she gave ashes for the first time, the, 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 in the future, she's going to give again. And maybe after she gave ashes, She'll think about it and she'll think, you know, that wasn't very nice. I gave that monk some ashes. I could have given him something. I could have given him some food or I could have given him some money or something, but I gave him ashes. She may think like that. And next time when the monk comes, she'll give something more, something better. So that's uh, a kind of common principle when it comes to asking for charity, that you try to get people to give something. I know uh, Vaishasika Prabhu, who is a very successful book distributor, so he writes in his book about 
our family business, he writes, the, he calls it the penny, the penny principle. And he goes, he would go to people and say, just give, even if you can't, just give one penny, give one cent, give the smallest, the smallest amount of currency, just to get them started. Because in the future, they, once they start giving, then they'll give more, they'll give more, and it will increase. That's a kind of principle which happens often when people give charity. They give something small. Sometimes you're on book distribution, you know, and then you, you, you offer something to people and they start small and they give you a nice donation. So because they give you a nice donation, you give them a bigger book. And when you give them the bigger book, he feels, oh, he's giving me so much, and they give you more money. And they give you more money, so you give them a bigger book, you know. And in this way, he gives a big donation. And so, sometimes giving charities like that, that you can start small and get and grow big. And sometimes it's better to be to go big in the beginning, because they may not give again. <laughs> So asking charity, it's a science. <laughs> yes? Okay, another question? So currently we have another one, Maharaj. So we have two more. Yes. Yeah, next one is Prabhu. Go ahead, Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Is it uh, true that uh, when we accept donation uh, from someone, Yes, if you're taking donation from people for your own self, then you also take some of their karma. So Prabhupada warned devotees, they said, you know, when you go for Sankirtan, if, you're, if, you, if people want to benefit, you should give whatever they give you, whatever money you get donations, you should give to the temple. If you're taking it for your own self, for your own maintenance, then you get karma. You're going to get the karma for that. So you have to be very careful. If you want the people to benefit, you have to make sure that what donations they give are used for the service of Krishna. And, you know, we get, often go in Sankirtan and we get donations and often the money may be from sinful people. And maybe the money even comes from some sinful activity. So you can get heavy karma. And you have to be very careful about taking charity. You have to be very careful because a lot of karma is involved there. Even the king of the state, the king of the state, he takes one-sixth of the karma for the whole country. So it's a big job to become a, 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 a king, to be a ruler, or to be, a, you know, the, like the prime minister or the head of the state. And the, they, take, they have to take karma. From, from all, for all the actions which the people are doing. They cannot expect to be in these positions and just go, just enjoy. No, they're taking karma, a lot of karma. Even, you know, somebody running a temple, temple president, it's a very difficult job. He also is involved to make sure the deities are looked after, to make sure that the, the devotees are taken care of. And if, if these things are not done, then he gets some karma, he's going to get some reactions. If the deities are not protected, not properly cared for, you get some karma. Of course, you take disciples, you get karma. If they're unqualified disciples, 
You, you get karma. So we have to be very careful. Is it clear? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, may I ask another one, Maharaj? Uh -huh. So I see uh, some of our devotees, if on a day full time devotee, I mean uh, full time in the temple. So he also uh, sometimes rejects donation giving by unknowing people. What is this reason, Maharaj? I don't understand. He, he gets donations by... He, 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 unknowing people, Maharaj. Unknowing people. Yes. He knows them or he doesn't know them. Don't know, Maharaj. Unknown. Un unknown people. And yes. he get, unknown. But what's he doing with the donation? Is it coming to the temple? Or is it for him, his own self? Uh, I mean, so, uh, some people uh, give donation, but he asking what they do. Is it uh, they do the sadhana, or they do the, uh, they, they bring my sadhana? If not, they, they will not, not accept Maharaj. Something like that, Maharaj. I don't, I don't understand the point. The, they're doing sadhana. The, no. pe the people giving, the people giving donations are doing sadhana. I mean, he asked this man who uh, who giving donation, uh, is he uh, is he uh, good in good sadhana or no? He asked like that, Oh, before he takes the charity. Yeah, they question the person who giving the donation before they accept the donation. They question the, you know, the giver, are they doing their sadhana nicely before they accept? So some devotees did that. You mean he, he wants to take the donation from someone who is doing good sadhana? do it that way, that they only accept donations from devotees who have good sadhana. Mm. Some devotees hold on to a principle like that. Uh, what, they take, but they take the donation for themselves? No, I, I think uh, initially the question was uh, donation for a temple. If they're taking the money for the temple, then they don't get any karma. If the money is going to the temple, they're not, they're, they're not going to get any karma. That's devotional service. You give the money back to the... The money belongs to Krishna and you're giving it to Krishna. You give it to the temple. There's no karma there. But if the money goes to the devotee, then there will be karma. But uh, how about if he's a full, full time devotee, Maharaj? Is also uh, the karma there? Well, if he's a full time devotee, he doesn't need money. He lives in the temple. He doesn't need money for himself. He cannot take money from people. If he's living in the temple, He's full time. He doesn't need his own money. He can simply live in the temple. And whatever money people give as donations, it should go to the temple. It's not his property. It's not his money. People are giving the donation. They're giving it for the temple. They're not giving it for him. But if he takes the money for himself, then he'll get some karma. Somebody living, somebody living in the temple, they don't need money. They don't, we don't pay people to live in the temple. We don't let them come and live in the temple and take money from other people. 
That's not good. Okay, they use a donation for preaching. That's all right. But it should be done with under authorization. It should be approved. The temple manager should approve. Not that he, he just keeps the money and when he feels like it, he uses it for preaching. When he gets some money, he should give it to the temple. And when he needs it for preaching, then the temple will give him. That's the system. If he's living in the temple, he doesn't need his own money. He's depending on the temple. So he's living in the temple, somebody gives donation, that money should go to the temple. Right? You give the money to the temple, there's no karma. But if you take the money for yourself, then there's karma. You say you use it for preaching, we have to see. We have to see how they use it for preaching. Some people talk, oh I will use it for preaching. But what is their preaching? We have to see, we have to under... You see, the preaching is under the, it's under the management of the temple. He's living in the temple, he's a full-time temple devotee, he's under, should be under the control of the temple. He cannot just go when he feels like it to preach. He cannot just go where he wants to preach. He's under the control. So these activities, you know, preaching activities and collecting donations and so on, they should, they're controlled. So accepting donations is a sensitive thing, sensitive issue. Just like myself as a sannyasi and a spiritual teacher, you know, I get donations so the donations are all monitored and every year we have to give a report to the GBC how much donations we received and what we did with the money, where did it go. And it's understood whatever money we get, whatever donations we get, it's not for us but it belongs to ISKCON and it's meant to be used for, for ISKCON. Right? I've never heard this before. I've never heard anybody like this, anybody say like this, you only want to take donation from somebody who has good sadhana. <laughs> I don't... Okay, Mara, no problem. It's, Thank you very much. It's, it's something you Indonesian devotees are doing, it's not something which is customary anywhere else. Yes, one more question there, Dhritatma.
there are so many uh, charities uh, in society so like us uh, the devotees in ISKCON now are There's three questions here, three parts of questions. The first one is, uh, the first one is during this COVID pandemic, um, uh, devotees collectively uh, uh, do donations to the people in general for their uh, basic uh, food needs like grains, things like that, that they, they, that, that they need. So uh, what about this? That's the first question. So we we don't just uh, donate like prasadam, but like uh, raw groceries, like grains, like that to to the common people who are in need. Uh, what about the donation like this? That's the first one. Yes, sometimes it's done. Sometimes this is done. I've seen in Mayapur also. Sometimes they give they'll give bags of rice or they'll give some uncooked rice, grains, they'll give it as charity, but they'll give it to people who are devotees. They'll give it to people who are, you know, actually devotees. They may not be initiated, but they'll give it to people who are pious, who are vegetarian, who are not doing any sinful activity. Do you understand? Hare Krishna. Yes, Maharaj. Just finished translating. Uh, so, uh, and his... Chuda, chuda, chuda. So, his... So the, 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 the next question is what 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 happens to someone who donates land like for a temple and then withdraws it? So the the, the uh, they already donated it, but then uh, in, uh, later they withdraw it. Well, that's not good. That's not good charity. You give charity, you can't take it back. That's not proper. Somebody's giving something. We had experience like that before. There was a there was one there was some ladies I think in Andhra Pradesh, and they were deciding about giving land, and they were going to give land, but then, and Prabhupada had come there and met them and everything, and then. Prabhupada said, no, no, forget it, because they had given the land, but they'd given the land with conditions. They had conditions that unless you build something within one year, then I take the land back. So Prabhupada said, okay, forget it, we don't want this land. Because they had put conditions about, you know, within one year you have to have a building up, you have to do this, otherwise we're not giving, the, we'll take the land back. So Prabhupada said, "Don't don't go through with this. Don't don't take this land, because the 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 mood in giving is not right. That they'd put these conditions on giving the land. So somebody wants to give land, they have to give it without these kind of conditions. Understand?" His third question is that uh, for us devotees in Bali, we are part of like our traditional villages and in our social customs, uh, we are expected to also donate to like the village temple like that, uh, where the 
these temples are like temples for demigods, not just for Vishnu. And uh, what about that, Maharaj? Yeah, sometimes you may have to, out of obligation, you have to do these things. You have to do it. If you don't do it, then it's, it creates some problem. So sometimes you have to do it. It cannot be avoided. But you, you just try to give the minimum charity. I mean, if you can avoid giving it, it's good. But if you if you're if you're really not allowed, if everybody has to give compulsory, then you give whatever is the minimum amount. But they should they should recognize that you know, okay, you're Hare Krishna, you're not doing this anymore, so you should be freed. You shouldn't have to pay the charity pay the tax or whatever it is. If they recognize that you're Hare Krishna, then they should take your name off. And you explain to them that, you know, no, I'm not earning. So some people, they'll recognize that, that they'll see that you're a Hare Krishna monk and they'll, they won't expect you to pay these kind of taxes. You have to consider your own ability. If you have a lot of wealth, if you're driving a car and you're, they see that you have quite a bit of money and so on, then they will expect you to pay the charity. But if you're living very simply and frugally, then you can just simply say, I don't have money. You understand? Yeah. Yang, yang kolektif itu gimana, Prabhu? Reaksi yang kolektif. Jadi, kan ada karma, ko karma kolektif. Artinya kita menerima karma kolektif dari lingkungan kita kan kita sama bermasyarakat ada uh, mungkin pembunuhan bersama dan lain sebagainya itu kan kita terima karma kolektifnya gimana itu bisa terjadi iya kan kita di iya ya seperti itu so other thing about the Balinese customs is uh, there are some some uh, ceremonies like that that they, that they do with slaughtering animals uh, like that. So uh, does there occur like collective karma and that we are then becoming part of it or how? Yes, how that's right. Yeah, if you're, if you're contributing to it, then certainly you're also con going to get some of the karma which comes from it. There is collective karma, just like, you know, you're born into that condition, so you have a particular karma by birth. But because of your spiritual birth, you can be freed from that kind of karma. Because you've taken, if you've taken initiation in Krishna consciousness, then you're relieved from that kind of karma. But you don't take part in it anymore, of course. You're no longer a part of that culture. So you don't contribute. You don't want to contribute. You don't want to become involved with it. And they sh that should be made clear to the people that, you know, you're, you're following another path now. You're not following that traditional path. You're taking another process. They may not like it, what can you do? You just tell them, you know, I'm Hare Krishna now, I don't do this, sorry. Yes? Yes, Maharaj. 
berusaha untuk memberikan sesuatu yang lebih dari kita berupa buku, pesat itu solusinya kalau saya di masyarakat di kampung gitu. itu yang menjadi manfaat yeah, so uh, mostly in Bali could not really uh, 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 be aloof from all that but then we do by also then giving prasadam or books to the people That's right. Okay. Yeah, you give them books, you give them prasadam. Very good. Okay. So we'll go ahead. Yes, Maharaj. Okay, going to text number 23. Are you all able to see the, the text, Bhagavad Gita? Yes, Maharaj, we can see the text. Okay, from the beginning of creation, the three words, Om Tat Sat, were used to indicate the Supreme Absolute Truth. Oh. These three symbolic representations were used by Brahmanas while chanting the hymns of the Vedas and during sacrifice for the satisfaction of the Supreme. So Srila Prabhupada was some, often in the beginning of our movement, you will see letters there which are on the re records, uh, Prabhupada's old letters. At the end of the letter he would write Om Tat Sat. Om Tat Sat purifies everything. The acts which we are doing here, all these different activities are described. They can all be purified by the presence of the Supreme Lord. I will read the purport. It has been explained that penance, sacrifice, charity and foods are dis divided into three categories, the modes of goodness, passion and ignorance. But whether first class, second class or third class, They are all condemned, they are all conditioned, contaminate, contaminated by the material modes of nature. When they are aimed at the Supreme, Om Tat Sat, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Eternal, they become means for spiritual elevation. In the scriptural injunctions, such an objective is indicated. These three words, Om Tat Sat, particularly indicate the Absolute Truth, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In the Vedic hymns, the word Om is always found. So Prabhupada talks about first class, second class and third class. They're all contaminated by the modes of nature, but by Om Tat Sat, then, There's hope for spiritual elevation. So this is the idea. There's a chance that we can be, we can make some spiritual elevation, even though we may be in the mode of ignorance. Some spiritual elevation can come about through adding Om Tat Sat. Right? Okay, uh, and Prabhupada explains about the Om Tat Sat in the next paragraph. The conclusion is that the performance of charity, sacrifice and penance must be done in the mode of goodness. Must be done in the mode of goodness. Performed in the mode of passion or ignorance, they are certainly inferior in quality. The three words Om Tat Sat are uttered in conjunction with the holy name of the Supreme Lord. Om Tat Vishnu. So like that Prabhupada explains the meaning Om Tat Sat. It just simply indicates the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So you add the holy name and it can purify everything. At the end of the purport Prabhupada explains 
When one performs penance, charity and sacrifice with these three words, he is acting in Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness is a scientific execution of transcendental activities which enables one to return home back to Godhead. There is no loss of energy in acting in such a transcendental way. So adding Om Tat Sat can really help to the activity. Several verses on it. At the end of the purport of text 27, Prabhupada writes, These supreme words, Om Tat Sat, are thus used in many ways to perfect all activities and make everything complete. And then the text number 28, anything done as sacrifice, charity or penance without faith in the Supreme, O Son of Prita, is impermanent. It is called asat and is useless both in this life and in the next. All right, uh, let's just go back and see the PowerPoint. I've got a few verses there, a few important points you need to see. Uh, we've got the PowerPoint. It's already open. Yeah, in the PowerPoint icon. Okay. Can you see it? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay, the overview, foods and worship and faith, then sacrifice, austerity and charity, and then finally Om Tat Sat, to purify all activities. Then we were speaking about austerity, body, mind and words, and Prabhupada spoke about not agitating others and, and the social convention, speaking the truth very palatable, flattering. It, that's a social convention. Don't speak unpalatable truth. But we are not meant for that purpose. We are preacher. We are servant of God. We must speak the real truth. You may like it or may not like it. Cannot be happy in any... That is a fact. So Prabhupada could speak like that. We cannot always take such a heavy point. Now here's charity in the modes. Three kinds of charity. Worthy place, they will imply you can give charity in the hands of a Brahmana or Vaishnava because they will imply whatever you give them in the service of the Lord. So that's the idea that people will give charity to the devotee because they expect the devotee will use it for the service of the Lord. 
Now, it doesn't always happen like that. Some devotees, they don't know how to properly use money. So, the, the problem also is you're getting karma. You have to be very careful about who you take money from. So people are taking money, you say that they want to take it from people with good sadhana. That means they're taking the money for themselves. <laughs> they're not taking for the temple, they're taking money for their own self. They want to take money from devotees. I'm surprised devotees want to give them money. <laughs> a charity in the mode of passion, people will say, I am so charitable. That is rajasik. And people in the mode of ignorance, Prabhupada describes, he says, one does not know where the money is going. Just like in Bowery Street. Bowery Street means a place in New York where many people are alcoholics. They drink all the time. They're always drunk. So in that Bowery Street, that drunkard comes and polishes the motor car and someone gives him five dollars and he immediately goes to drink. That means this charity, that means gives him impetus for drinking. So if charity creates such drunkard, that is very dangerous. He has to suffer, the man who is giving in charity. So you give in charity, you have to suffer. Okay, this is chapter 18, we'll go on to that tomorrow. Wait, there's couple, some quotes here, I wanted you to see these quotes. Let me move this out of here. One has to raise himself at least to the mode of goodness before the path to understanding the Supreme Lord can be opened. Without raising oneself to the standard of the mode of goodness, one remains in ignorance and passion, which are the cause of demoniac life. And then, without coming to the platform of Sattva Gun, nobody can advance in spiritual life. That is a fact. Just like nobody is allowed to enter law college unless he is graduate, restriction is there. What he will understand, he must be a graduate. So similarly, first of all, one has to come to the platform of Sattva Gun, then spiritual knowledge begins. And then, since the present civilization is not very congenial to the living entities, Krishna consciousness is recommended. Through Krishna consciousness, society will develop the mode of goodness. When the mode of goodness is developed, people will see things as they are. So important to come to the mode of goodness. But at the same time, taking up Krishna consciousness doesn't depend on the mode of goodness. Even one is not in goodness, even one is in the darkest part of the quality of ignorance, still he can be immediately elevated to the spiritual platform. So this Krishna consciousness movement is directly offering the spiritual platform which is above the mode of goodness. The quality of goodness will automatically be there. So you, you see, it appears in some ways contradictory because Prabhupada was quoting, he said, you have to be in the mode of goodness, just like if you go to law college, you, want to, you have to be a graduate, so you have to be in the mode of goodness to take up devotional service. But here, it says, Prabhupada says, even one is not in goodness, he can immediately be elevated to the spiritual platform. But, look at the second quote. The second quote says, the quality of goodness will automatically be there. 
right? If he, if he actually comes to the spiritual platform, then the quality of goodness will be there. And he won't go back to passion and ignorance. We have to see how long they can remain, how long the person can remain on the spiritual platform. Without being in the mode of goodness, then he will go back to passion and ignorance. Sometimes people, they do devotional, set. they come to the spiritual platform for a little while and then they go, away, and then they go back into passion and ignorance because they have, they have not been properly situated in goodness. So you have to come to the quality of goodness. And Prabhupada would quote this verse from second chapter of the first canto, Tadara Jastamo Bhava Kama Lobo Dayaschaye Chita Itere Navidam Stitam Sadve Prasidati Stitam Sadve As soon as irrevocable loving service is established in the heart, the effects of nature's modes of passion and ignorance, such as lust, desire and hankering, disappear from the heart. Then the devotee is established in goodness. He becomes completely happy. So this is the sign that the devotee is in goodness. He's completely happy. And lust, desire and hankering are all removed. They disappear from the heart. So passion and ignorance is gone. He's situated in goodness. Titam sattve. Right? So the objectives, we spoke, not tonight, but last night we spoke about how different religious practices are influenced by the modes of nature. Religious practices can involve the mode of passion, the mode of ignorance, maybe some of the mode of goodness also. We rarely find transcendental religious faith pure uh, devotion, pure love of God. It's very uncommon to see these in religious practices. Most people are religious. It's some material type of business. We also spoke about appropriate and inappropriate charity according to the Bhagavad Gita. We learned that charity should never do be done without proper discrimination. We should be very careful. We can give prasadam to everyone and we give the holy name to everyone, but we want to be very careful about who you give money to. And then we discussed the importance of developing the mode of goodness in Krishna consciousness. And at the same time, Krishna consciousness is independent of the mode of goodness. A final quote. Because people have no education in actual knowledge, they become irresponsible. To stop this irresponsibility, education for developing the mode of goodness of the people in general must be there. When they are actually educated in the mode of goodness, they will become sober, in full knowledge of things as they are. Then people will be happy and prosperous. Even if the majority of the people aren't happy and prosperous, <laughs> if a certain percentage of the population develop Krishna consciousness, and become situated in the mode of goodness, then there is a possibility for peace and prosperity all over the world. From 14th chapter, verse 17, purport. Okay, any other questions? Uh, first we have one Miki Prabhu, and then a few questions in the chat. Okay. Yes. I would like to ask you, yesterday we were uh, speaking about this pure goodness, and I might be wrong, uh, 
I, I, I understood this that um, uh, only uh, Krishna consciousness is uh, or Krishna conscious activities are on a transcendental platform about three modes of material nature. So I was thinking about uh, Buddhists and if you can kindly clarify that it is possible also for Buddhists to be in pure goodness because if they, if, I, I'm just thinking, if they realize that I'm not this body and you know, it is some kind of mukti there that they are uh, in Brahman, so we can, can we say that they, they are also uh, acting in pure goodness? Thank you, Maharaj. Well, first of all, Buddhists don't believe in Brahman. Brahman is a oneness. But the Buddhists, they talk about nothing, the void. They don't consider the world to be real. And they don't often believe in the soul. Therefore, they have the Anatma philosophy, that there's no soul. There's no God, and there's no soul, there's nothing. And the world is unreal. This is the Buddhist idea. So they don't, they can't go to the Brahman. They're not going to go into the Brahman. The... Okay, so we can, can we say about this, uh, um, because when I read one purport in Bhagavad Gita, there was, I, I cannot remember that, uh, that verse, but in one purport there is a Prabhupada statement that, tra uh, about transcendentalists, and uh, it was, also include this uh, impersonalists, so we can say Mayavadis, right? So they are going to uh, merge with Brahman, Maharaj? The Brahmagyanis Brahma merge with the Brahman, Brahmagyanis, Mayavadi, and, and some, some impersonalists, they may be pure, Mayavadis are offenders and they often cannot go to the Brahman, but they simply become, they may become a tree or something like that in the material world because of their offences, because of their blasphemy of the Supreme Lord. But the Brahmagyanis who don't commit any offences, they can go into the Brahma Jyoti. they are uh, doing this uh, action in pure goodness? The Brahmagyanis? Right. Because they are un uh, above the three modes of material nature. Yes. They're transcendentalists. Transcendentalists. So, so can we say about them that they are doing these uh, activities in pure goodness? Yeah. Mm. They transcend the modes. Okay. They transcend the modes of nature, they can go to the, beyond the level of pure goodness. So not only devotees, but also Brahma Gyanis. Yes. Thank you, Maharaj. Understood. Hare Krishna. The next Gita in the next Kamal Hare Krishna Maharaj and Brahma. Maharaj, I am not able to understand this Om Tattva 17.23 Shloka in this purport that Prabhupada has given the Chandogya Upanishad that the first goal and the second goal and the third goal in the second paragraph. Yes, well, they've just put the three things together, the three statements, they've put them together to make Om Tattva. And it represents the Supreme Lord. Then what, what is the first goal, second goal and third goal? Oh. Well, what is the goal? The goal is to purify all activities by remembering the Supreme Lord. That's the, the real goal. That so many other things, so many activities have been done, everything can be purified by Om Tat Sat. 
That is the point. Just like we chant Hare Krishna, it's the same thing. Everything becomes perfect by the chanting of the holy name. So, Om Tat Sat can purify everything. Like we, we Hare Krishna, well, they say the same thing about Hare Krishna. They say Vedic mantras are only supposed to be chanted by Brahmanas. Right? So, Om Tat Sat, is it a Vedic mantra? It's not a Vedic mantra, it's a combination of di different mantras put together. From Bhagavad Gita, we're taking from Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is not a strict Vedic text. Bhagavad Gita is Smriti, it's not Shruti. Right? The Brahmanas say, they say you cannot chant the Vedas, but you can chant Bhagavad Gita. And in Bhagavad Gita, Om Tat Sat is there. So anybody can chant Om Tat Sat. Srila Vyasadeva put Om Tat Sat in the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is for everyone, not just for Brahmins. Bhagavad Gita is not Shruti, it's Smriti. And Smriti is for everyone. So everyone can chant Om Tat Sat. Yes, Maharaj, so I have a in the first six chapters and the like middle six chapters and the end chapters they have something like oh one is oh one is sat and one is sat they're like what om what uh, like first six chapters they say it's sat and then the middle six are it's om something like this they say and the last three chapters are sat like something they say i've never heard this who told you this uh, is it i Somewhere I don't remember from. No, I have never heard. I have never seen anywhere. Just take what we hear, what we read. Don't be careful what you hear. Yes, Maharaj. Yes. Some more questions. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you. Ananta Vijaya Prabhu. Go ahead, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Yeah, Hare Krishna Maharaj. I want uh, continuing to ask some uh, question about uh, charity, Maharaj. Sometimes but, there are some devotees, maybe too much strict like that, in Sadhana. Then they come to Rehasta's house when that when that Rehasta, after some. Uh, sometimes that Rehasa maybe ask, uh, uh, offer them to soft drink, something like food, but they do not, not accept at all, not accept that uh, uh, offering from that Rehasa out of uh, consideration of not pure prasad or maybe uh, there is a, there are exchange of pious activities when they accept it. Then what is uh, your opinion about that, Maharaj? There's an exchange of pious activities. Uh, when we accept uh, something from... Uh, like we, we heard that uh, one, uh, one uh, seed of uh, grains that uh, we have to uh, exchange it, like uh, our pious activities which are taken by that uh, who give us uh, a prasad like that. Well, Srila Prabhupada said we should not take grains which are cooked by non-devotees. I mean that uh, sometimes there are some devotees too much strict like that with the Gyaru Sadhana. Sometimes they come to Grahastha's house, uh, that, that Grahastha offers some prasad, something like that, but they reject it and not accept it because uh, of consideration of not pure prasad. Okay. It's up to them. It's not very nice that they come to your house and you're not able to give them prasadam. If they don't want grains, then give them some fruit. 
Right? Yes, madam. And they want. They don't want any of your cooking. They don't want you to. They don't. They refuse to take any food you've cooked. Then you have fresh fruit, and you offer them some fruit. Have one in that grahasa's house a divorced deity already? Then offer to the that deity. Then there is prasad in that grahasa's house. But uh, the consideration is too much strict, I think. Sometimes they not accept it because uh, there are uh, sometimes uh, consideration of not pure prasad, pure prasad, something like that. Not pure? Why? Why not pure? What are you doing? What is the grihastha doing which is not pure? Yes. Huh? I ask that, uh, yes, sometimes the, some devotees are like that, Mara. No? Oh. Okay. So just give them some fruit. It's their problem, not your problem. You know, you're the you're grihastha. You're, if somebody's grihastha, you know, you're... You, you're doing your sadhana, you're doing what, what you're supposed to do is grihastha. They're too strict, it's up, that's their, their problem, not your problem. But you can tell them, you, maybe you like some fruit, I can offer you some fruit. If they don't like fruit, okay, water, you want a glass of water? Is there any exchange, Harad, when they accept prasad, some grain from grahasta, then uh, their uh, pious activity is something, their, their uh, bhakti sukriti will be taken by that grahasta. Well, Prabhupada said, if you eat the grains in the home of a non-devotee, then you take their karma. Mm. Right? You take their karma because you eat grains cooked by the non-devotees, then you take karma from them. And Prabhupada said, when you go to these people's homes, if they're meat eaters and non-devotees, then you don't take grain. You must all, you tell them, I just take uncut fruit, uncut fruit. Because if they, if they cut the fruit, they may use a knife which they use to cut the meat. So said, better you don't take any cooked food. You just tell them, I will only take uncut fruit. That, that way they can protect themselves. So, the people coming to your home, you can also ask them, would you like some fruit? Right? Yes, my Lord. Just give them so some fruit. Ask first. Yeah, give fruit. That means we, we have to ask first, Maharaj. Okay, so ask. Ask them. Thank you, Maharaj. Should we take the next, Maharaj? Yes. Uh, yes, go ahead, Maharaj. Uh, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisance, this Om Maharat. Uh, thank you for this chance. I want to ask about uh, this charity. So, um, uh, I had heard about uh, maybe we we can give food, uh, and it it is just for now for uh, make the one full just for now. But uh, when we give material education, maybe just in this life. But uh, next next life uh, they should learn from zero and about uh, if we give krishna consciousness so uh, we can give it for for long time for life after life for them and it is it is uh, what should we do i won't ask about uh, that the slide before uh, uh, if we if we uh, give um, Krishna consciousness, uh, maybe it's not, uh, there are no wealth there, but uh, we give Krishna consciousness, then uh, it will be uh, very peace and uh, more prosperous, prosperity there. So how about the, uh, when we have empathy and I, when we want 
to give a uh, increased social economic when we want to give a uh, material education maybe so uh, gradually sorry sorry the the uh, the consciousness maybe the acceptance of Krishna consciousness they will accept it in a good way uh, should we do take that or we just focus on ourselves or on our our sadhana on our life so uh, just for ourselves uh, and what we uh, we can do to uh, to uh, do empathy with the other for that how how this Mahara thank you Hare Krishna mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, you want to give education, material knowledge, material education to people? Uh, I, I actually am like a, a teacher. You are, and, you are a teacher? Uh, yes. Uh -huh. And you're, yes. you're giving material education? Yes. And, and I have interest to give uh, about uh, social economic about about um, like uh, how to make this country or this nation in in directly in a good thing to increase uh, but I know about Prabhupada, uh, Prabhupada conversation uh, in the in the book uh, about uh, maybe now I I am Indonesian but next like maybe and where so uh, our is jiwa our is body uh, but i still have uh, i want to do something with my nation uh, i think maybe if i increase the social economic increase the material education and after that they they can have a good understanding they can uh, take krishna consciousness and Still, we, we try to make conversation about Krishna, give them prasada. And, uh, I want to ask that is, uh, we, uh, can we do that like that? Well, yes, you can, of course. It's very nice if you can do that, that in addition to giving material education, you can also try to give them some Krishna consciousness. But you have to be sensitive to the situation. In different countries, it's different. I don't know how it is in Indonesia, but, you know, other people may take objection to the fact that you're presenting Krishna consciousness. And they say, you know, as a teacher, you shouldn't be uh, presenting your own beliefs and putting them into other people. Just like in America, in America you see they used to have prayer in the schools, but then they decided they didn't want to pray in the school anymore because they thought it's not good because we, it, it forces people or it, it, it put, makes people believe more in God. And they said people should have a right to practice their religion on their own. They should just practice it on their own. So they stopped having the prayer in the schools. They took it out. They just stopped it. They said, let people pray on their own. We don't want to have it in the schools anymore. If people want to pray, they can do it on their own. And so the problem is you're a teacher, and if you start imposing your views and your beliefs onto people, it may bring you some problems with the other authorities or with the some students may complain, some teachers may also hear about it, and they may also complain. So you have to be careful, you have to be sensitive about what you do and how you do it. Especially when you're in the school. When you're outside the school, then it's different. But when you're in the school, and when you're in the, the, the teaching, the time for teaching, then you have to be careful what you do and what you say. Do you understand? Yeah, so it depends uh, about the situation, like in the place. 
Yes, it depends on the, the place and the people who run the school and what they think. So you have to be careful. Hare Krishna. Uh, next, do you know about Sala Prabhu? Do you know about Sala? Do you know about Sala? Nobody there. Okay, somebody else? Swarup Krishna Prabhu? I don't know what's uh, Maharaj. Maharaj, my question is uh, regarding the slides that you showed. Sthitam Sattva Siddhati and uh, it's a basic question actually and uh, there are three words lust desire and hankering which are mentioned in the translation of this verse and in bhagavatam lust we know is seated in the mind intelligence and false ego by and the senses sorry and desire we have known that it is uh, a of the soul, I mean, it is part of it, it comes from the soul. My question is, what is the link between desire and lust? Well, desire is your desire is coming from the mind, right? Desire is it's a function of the mind. You don't have desire in the intelligence, you don't have desire in the, the, the desire, when we talk about desire, that is the mind. You're talking about the actions of the mind. From the mind, there, the mind is full of desires. And these desires are there in faces, thinking, feeling, willing, but it's all about desires. Right? And you're asking, what is the relationship between lust and desire? Well, lust is, we said lust is in the senses and in the mind and in the intelligence. So lust is more uh, pervading. It's there in everything. Of course, our desires are facilitated through the senses, but they originate from the mind. So, the desire and lust, desire can be purified, there's, there's material desires, there's also spiritual desire. There's desire for sense gratification and there's desire for the service of Lord Krishna. So, we, we cannot stop desire, but we can purify it. Are elevated, right? We speak about the higher taste, the param jisva, the higher taste, the higher desire. And so lust, but lust is something which is more, is described the all-pervading enemy. So lust is a very degrading force. But lust can also be purified. L the pure form of lust is love, love for Krishna. So we want to change that lust. We want the lust to become pure love. So, Maharaj, that means this pure desire is also coming from the mind or? No, no, soul's desire. Well, you could say, you see, within the soul, the mental, the, the, the functions of the, the mind are all there within the soul, right? It's not like in, within the spiritual body that you have a... You don't have a subtle body like that within the spiritual body, but the subtle body, the spiritual body itself can do all these things, thinking, feeling, willing, can desire, everything is there. There's no difference, just like Lord Krishna and his spiritual body, there's no difference between the body and the soul. 
in the spiritual form. So in the spiritual form, there's no difference between the body and the soul and the, the mind. It's all there within the spiritual form. Yes, Maharaj. Understood. But thank you, Maharaj. Okay. So, Maharaj, we have Dinavatsala Prabhu there. Okay, Dinavatsala Prabhu, have a question? Shilakan Prabhu Dinavatsala. states that we uh, give charity to someone who is worthy. Sometimes Grihashtas are approached by Brahmacharis for charity. And sometimes this, this charity is used by them personally, not for the temple. So how do we deal with this? Second, uh, is it uh, is it uh, and for that brahmachari who does that, is that something that is is that uh, allowable? Uh, is it could could he, they do this? This has to be decided by the temple. Uh, are the temple taking responsibility for the maintenance of the brahmacharis? If the brahmacharis are staying in the temple and then coming and asking donations, is it done with the, author with the authorization of the temple? The temple should have you know, control over the brahmacharis who are living in the temple. If they're brahmacharis, they shouldn't be independent. The temple should be taking care of them. There may be some special need, maybe, I don't know what, but maybe the brahmachari, somehow the temple doesn't want to uh, pay for the, something for the brahmachari and the brahmachari wants to uh, collect the money for himself, has to get the money on his own. I, but that's something you have to find out from the temple. There should be a clear policy. Is the temple responsible for the expenses of the brahmacharis? Or are the brahmacharis supposed to pay everything for themselves? Brahmachari is taking money for himself? Why? What's he going to do? It should be considered. You don't want to just give money to the brahmachari for sen that. What kind of brahmachari is it? Comes and takes money. Brahmachari means whatever he collects, he will give to his spiritual master, or the representative of the spiritual master in the form of the temple president. This is brahmachari. Brahmachari doesn't keep money for himself. Right. These are principles. This has to be discussed with the temple managers. What is their, anti, what is their policy in, with the brahmacharis? Yes? Any other, any other question? Okay, let's hear them. There's four. The first one is from Anuradha Priya Mataji. Maharaj, what is the purpose of austerity, penance and charity? What is the purpose of austerity, penance and charity? Purification of existence. To purify our existence. Okay. Next. Next question from Priya Govinda Prabhu. I don't 
Yasha Maharaj, can we accept charity from politicians who have stolen from public coffers? If yes, how can that donations be sanitized? By giving it to Krishna for the service of Krishna, for the Krishna consciousness movement. Yes. When they if, if they go to Brahma Jyoti, they they can stay. They'll stay there for some time. That they'll not stay there forever because there's nothing to do. There's no activity there. It's very boring there. They'll come back to material world. Okay. By just chanting Om Tat Sat, the charity or penance or sacrifice actually performed in lower modes get purified? Yes. That's right. That's why the chanting of the Om Tat Sat is recommended. It purifies these acts. It helps them to become, to get, to make some progress, to get elevation. May not be a hundred percent purification. That will depend on the on the attitude of the performer, but it will help. It will help to to make some elevation, spiritual elevation. Okay, Maharaj. Seems like the questions are finished. Uh, there's no more questions and no more raised hands. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. So we will stop here tonight, and we'll and we'll see you tom uh, tomorrow night. We'll go on to 18th chapter. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada ki. Jai. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.